Hey everybody, this is Franco, and this video is going to be about building a CNC control box for the mini lathe. I am going to try to keep this video under five minutes, so please forgive me if I seem like I'm talking fast. I'm going to do this in a series of videos. This will be the first of several where I'm documenting the process. So what we're doing, the old good old mini lathe here, I'm going to show it a little bit of love. We're going to upgrade from these uh, Long's motor open loop steppers. We're going to upgrade to a closed loop stepper system, just like the ones I used on the Precision Matthews milling machine over there. So that's what this project is about. And the first thing you need to do when you're first thing you need to do when you're building a CNC control system is you need to find a box to put everything in. So on the mil, mini mill, well, the, the Precision Matthews mill, I guess it's a medium mill. I don't know. It's not a mini mill. We'll call it a medium mill. Whatever. The PM25MV. I used this awesome Hoffman polycarbonate enclosure that I bought off of eBay. And uh, there's the part number if you're curious. You can zoom in. You can pause and check that out. Um, this enclosure was, by the time you pay for shipping, it was about $200. So it wasn't cheap. But I like it. it it's, it's a good enclosure. It has a lot of room in it. But um, for the mini lathe, I didn't want to spend that kind of money. And I think most of the people that are into mini lathes, and they probably feel the same way. They don't want to spend $200 on an enclosure. So I figured, hey, there's got to be a cheaper way to solve this problem. And I took a trip to Home Depot, and I think I found it. Found this nice metal toolbox for $28, $27.97. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, that's perfect. I can build... Uh, I can turn that into a CNC control box. So it's metal, I like that. It's fireproof or flame resistant or whatever. And it's pretty good size. And all the corners are nice and square, 90 degrees. The sides are all perpendicular. It's, it's basically just a box. There's a lot of room in there. So I think it's perfect. So I'm not gonna show you exactly how I drilled every hole and, and did all that. I'm just going to show you where I placed things uh, I'm going to assume that if you're into machining and building CNC machines, you probably, you know, have basic, you know, tool skills down. You know how to use a drill bit and all that stuff. So we're not going to bore you with those details. But let me show you where I put everything inside this box. So we'll start at the top. We have the Centroid 24-volt power supply mounted over here. Used uh, in, To mount everything, I used either an M3, an M4, or an M5 uh, piece of hardware. So probably used M3s there. Over here, we have a 5-volt power supply fastened there. If we flip the lid up here a little bit. Of course, there's the, there's the crown jewel of the project. There's the centroid acorn. And that's just fastened to the bottom with some standoffs. Came from Home Depot. Inside the box, we have a 400-watt 36 volt switching power supply. We have two of the HBS 860H drivers, and I'll give you the get a shot of the model number here just in case you want to see that. So there's two of those in there. They come from an eBay seller called Fast to Buy. I have a cooling fan. I don't know if you can see it because everything's black, but nice big heavy-duty cooling fan. Um, let me shut the lid and I'll go around the outside of the box. Okay, on the left side we have, this is where the power will enter. We have a fuse, we have a lamp, off and on switch, have an Ethernet bulkhead connector. On the right side, this is where the Z-axis wires will go. X-axis wires, that's where the wires for the encoder will go. This is the, the vent that I made on my 3D printer for the cooling fan. Um, you can buy proper vents off eBay when you buy the, the fan. I just, I didn't have any, so I, I printed them. And then this is an opening to let fresh air pass into the box. Going to uh, use one of these Omron encoders in this project. And here's just a shot of the label on the motor that I'm going to use. 
This is a three Newton meter motor. It's probably bigger than what I really need, but these are the same motors that I used on my milling machine. I'm going to use these motors on another project, so I'm going to keep that standard here in my little garage. But I do believe you could probably go with the smaller motor. I think there's a 2.2 version of this motor, 2.2 newton meters. You probably could use those on the mini lathe, but I'm going to use these. They're only a little bit more than the 2.2 newton meter motors. All right, so that's pretty much the overview. Like I said, I'm not going to tell you how to drill every hole. I will say this, um, get yourself a step drill. They're handy. Bought this one from Harbor Freight. It works just fine. Get yourself a good set of drill bits. Um, you'll need that. You'll probably need a few hole saws. I think I used a three inch hole saw to cut those openings for the fan. And I would recommend getting yourself uh, some files, like a half round file and a, a round file because when you drill through this metal, there'll be a lot of burrs. You want to get those burrs off of there. And if you need to, you know, size up a hole, make it a little bigger, you can use the round file to, to, to make it larger. Okay, I think that's everything I want to say right now. So, like I said, there'll be more videos. Next video, we'll get into hooking stuff up. So until then, thanks for watching. Please be safe and have a great day.